though Mr. Amitav Kant is not here, but I would like to mention his name first, uh, Sri Amitav Kanji, in absence here. Sri Sanjeev Chopra, Additional Chief Secretary, Government of West Bengal, and a very dear friend, uh, guest of honor for today. And uh, practically, it's very difficult to know which one was actually the keynote speaker. Who, uh, Sri Sisir Jaipuriya Ji, uh, Chairman of uh, Jaipuriya Group of Institutions and our living inspiration. Dr. N.K. Gupta, our conference director. And let me share today, I think it's his birthday, right? And I think, uh, and uh, Dr. Gupta is completing 70 years and uh, very illustrious career in education <laughs> and practically. <laughs> I thought I'll keep that surprise to me, right? Members of uh, our Board of Governors, uh, Sri Binod Malhotraji and Sri Parthoji are already present here. Members of our Academic Advisory Council. My NMP friends. <coughs> Distinguished speakers who are lined up today Permit me to take their names very quickly. Uh, Mr. T.K. Arun uh, from Opinion Editor of Times of India. <coughs> Mr. Alexander Segulev. Mr. Anand Pillai. Dr. Akhil Bushrai. Dr. Serotia. Dr. Raut. Dr. Tripathi. Dr. Deepak Tandon. Ulkit Trivedi Ji. Dr. Manmohan Bhutani. <coughs> Sir Vijay Shina, Sri Shyam Bash, Sri Ramesh Verma, Dr. Arun Das, Dr. Israj Singh, it's okay. Dr. Virendra Singh, Dr. Pooja Lakhanpal, Dr. Vidya Sikri, Sri Binod Malhotra, my fellow heads of Jaipuriya Group of Institutions, Yashji, and all distinguished guests at this conference, esteemed members of media, delegates who have come from all over India, and uh, papers, uh, those who have presented, uh, those who have contributed papers to this book from India as well as from abroad, and uh, my dear students. <clears throat> A very good morning. I'll keep it short because I already take a lot of pleasure uh, in seeing you in this Saturday morning. In the early morning, I was wondering if uh, the weather god is kind, then we should be all in time, and you all came in time, so thank you very much. Uh, like Mr. Chopra mentioned, actually we were born in the Cold War days. I mean, our, we studied during the Cold War days, and uh, at that time when I was imagining that uh, how the world would look like 20 years hence in 2020, suddenly we could never imagine that the world would look the way it looks today. Uh, the world was bipolar, and then it was slightly getting tripolar during non-aligned movement days. Then it was getting multipolar. A lot of trade associations were getting formed. Trade regimes were coming up for global trading systems and all that. But one thing has been constant, that things are not working. They have been keeping on changing. There is a constant effort for rediscovery. And I think the speech of Mr. Amitabh Kant and Mr. Sanjeev Chopra, I think, brought on this point very well, that um, what is the major disruptor in the current scenario? That's technology, all of us know. And uh, I think through a Q&A session, a Q&A also it came up that uh, <clears throat> technology is not an issue. The issue is aspiration. The, our aspiration is actually going higher than the rate of change of technology. So there is a little bit of mismatch. There is also a mismatch in adapting to technology, building up our skills. I, I, have, I mean, a lot of speakers are there to speak throughout the day as to how, what are the dimensions and dynamics of change that is affecting the world. But one thing is sure that the globe is now one. The, the boundary walls that we see, for which we normally take a visa or a passport, is actually now redundant, practically if you see, because you are able to do business sitting anywhere in the world, everywhere in the world. It's possible. So a lot of things have changed and there will be a lot of issues which will be getting discussed today. I thank all of you.
for coming here uh, this morning. One of the aspirational uh, issues I will just mention uh, and uh, complete my vote of thanks, that the world, by current estimate, is about, world economy is about $74 trillion. And India's share is very small, about $2.1, $2.2 trillion, about 3% of world economy. And people keep on talking these days that during the days of Mughals, probably India was the, having the dominant share of the global economy. So the journey is stiff. Some predictions are there. Pricewaterhouse has made a prediction that 2050, India will be number two economy in the world. Some other people have predicted by 2030, we will be number three. But these predictions may not work unless people work. But one thing is clear for all of us. It is the time for India, the opportunity for India, because India is relatively young, and we are going to remain young till 2000, I think 30, 32, we are going to remain young. In terms of, if we just maintain our growth rate at currently, let's say, with a little bit of down 6.7 or 6.8, but I, I hope that it will be around 7.5, 8, close, we will be touching. If we can actually maintain it, and like it was mentioned that in China, they are already having a credit burden and uh, they can't continue uh, this kind of credit flow indefinitely to business, whether it's doing good or bad. So India has a real opportunity because our financial institutions, our governance systems are getting better by the day. I'm sure India is poised to probably make that prediction come true by 2030, number three, and 2050, number two in the world. So in advance, I would like to congratulate all these young generations uh, who are going to make it happen. Okay, so with a round of applause for all of you, very big thank you to all of you. Thank you, Sanjeev, for coming here. Thank you. Thank you.